Okay guys, it's time to get started. Now, I didn't do this with the camera on because the camera's a little bit intrusive and I wanted to just work one-on-one -on -one with Rube, but I'm gonna show you guys what we did before Rube left us with his truck. Okay, so here's what we did. I had Rube sit in the truck and I grabbed my templates and I cut these templates to fit exactly the way Rube wanted it to fit. Now he had a few particular requests. He didn't want to block any of the foot access and he also didn't want his elbow coming in contact with the tube. So the only way we were going to be able to confirm that the tube was going to fit correctly for those two cases is to use the template. And you can see that it fits pretty nice and neat in there. And that's a really good example of how you can basically tailor fit a cage while the customer is here. So we continued with that. We used the remainder of our templates to also build out a full hoop. One of the things that we're trying to accomplish is we're trying to get the top tube to follow the roof line as tightly as possible and come right down along the door seam right between the seat. I'm gonna try and keep you guys as involved in this build as possible, but I'm gonna be focused on delivering to the customer and making sure the customer is happy with what they get in the end. So let's get into it. Okay, we're gonna start with the roll former. We just got this tool specifically for this project and we're super excited. We wanted this tube right here to match the roof line of the truck. So Kevin and I learned how to use that and we adjusted our template to match the roof's curve. And you can see here we're comparing the template to the curve that we actually made and it's looking real nice everything we do here is on the center line we like to keep track of the rotation with this nifty little tool it's an angle finder that attaches to the tube you can see here we're keeping an eye on that angle making sure that while we bend the tube the tube isn't rotating on us and now it's time to check it so every time we make a bend we check the tube to make sure it's coming out the way we want it to come out. And if it does not, we make any adjustments. You'll see that here in a minute. One of the challenges with bending tubing is that it's not that predictable. Sometimes the tube tends to spring back a little bit more or a little bit less. And you can see that right here. We've got another degree or two to go in this bend. So we're gonna put it back in and give it a little extra and then it should fit perfectly. Okay, so here's what we're working on right now. We're mocking up the side tube that's gonna go along the seat. And what Kevin's got here is a little, a little test piece. He wanted to see how just adding a little bend on the end would affect that. And you can see it's quite effective at reducing the amount of cope there. This looks like a good option on how to terminate this tube. Now we're gonna have to also disassemble the cage in order to get it in and out of the truck. So that's the beauty here of these templates. This is the end right here. And you can see it's got a curve to it. And then we want this to fit just like that. By having this template here, we can figure out really quick and easy where we want to cut things to fit it all together. Yeah, to get this little piece out of it. Yeah. That's really inefficient. I don't want to tell you. Pull it and then rotate it 180. Okay, go for it. Okay, the first thing that we did was create a cardboard template for the plate. Once the plate was fitted to the floor, we then use this right here. This is our template, and we made this so that way we can mock up how our tube needs to fit all the way up to the main hoop. This is the tube that you saw us bend up, and this is our end piece here. You can actually see we've got the lines drawn. This corner right here is going to be cut out of this section, 
and it's going to be the very end of this tube. Okay, so this little piece was special. Because we're taking a section out of the bend area, we ended up with a very extreme angle that could not be done with the whole saw. So we just ended up doing it completely manually. We used the sawzall to lop off most of it and the remainder was finished with a grinder and some trial and error. The angles like that, so you gotta compensate. <laughs> Okay, it's time to finish welding all this stuff. And we use our universal tab positioner to hold everything in position. And you'll see that's what Kevin's using right here. We love these things and you're gonna see it come out a whole bunch in this build. Check them out on our website if you're interested. Okay, so now that we've got the main hoop installed, we're gonna do this piece right here. Now this piece is pretty simple, but this right here, this cope right here is on a curve. So this is not a standard cope. And so we're gonna show you how we use our tracer to get this shape. Okay, so the first thing we do is we try to figure out the angle at which the tube is gonna meet. And I've done a little bit of eyeballing just to approximate the angle at which these tubes are gonna connect. And it works out to be 45 degrees, which is really convenient for us. So now we're gonna go cut the tube and put the cope on. Okay, we're at the tube notching machine. Here's our section of tube that we wanna notch. And now we're all set up and ready to go. Okay, so the trick here is to use the tube that we just made to set the angle for the tracer here. And we'll just sneak that in. Now, this is a lot harder to do when you're running the camera. This is how you would do it. You would use the tube to set the angle of the tracer and then use the tracer to capture the tube shape. And then when you're done, you now have a cope here that you can trace Okay, so this is a little bit of scrap that we've had. We're gonna use the whole saw to get rid of the bulk, and then after we're done finishing up the cope here, we'll then trim it to length, and we'll install it. Okay, so you can see the difference between what we need to make and what the notcher produced. So there's a little bit too much material here on the corners that we need to take off. So we're gonna do that now. Welding and we'll be able to finish this up real soon. So Kevin's gonna sharpie mark it and remove it. And this first step, he's gonna be tack welding the joint in position first. Once that's figured out, then we can install the tube, then tack weld it into its final position. Okay, so the next task is to do the shoulder bar. Now the shoulder bar can't go straight across because if it goes straight across, it's basically gonna be right across to your back. So we need to add these corners in here so that way we can push the bar backwards far enough so that way it doesn't interfere with your shoulders or your neck. So Kevin's gonna put together a template real quick and we're gonna build based on that. And then figure uh, perpendicular to the tube we would just go straight across at the angle we want. And then we want to add a little bit to account for the notch. So probably that line right there is going to do it. Actually make a little notch out so it'll fit.
Kevin's making adjustments, the marks that he had made earlier, he didn't really like them a whole lot, so he's adjusting it back and forth, trial and error, until he gets it right. Okay, so now we need to duplicate this for the other side. The easiest way to do that is to flip the template over, trace it, and you're all set to go. Okay, you guys, that is what we need to make. Okay, with this tube, Kevin lopped off most of what was not needed with the Sawzall. And then from that point on, it was just trial and error, working that cope in with a grinder until it finally fit. Just like that. Looks fantastic. Okay, it's time to do the seat belts. These seat belts came with these little brackets here and we're gonna repurpose these. What we did is we cut them apart. This piece right here is gonna be used, doesn't quite fit right now, but we'll make it fit. It's gonna be used as a restraint so that the straps don't slide around on the strap bar. And then this other piece right here, we're gonna weld this down to another bar that's behind this seat and we're gonna put the lap strap to these. And you'll see that here in a minute. This is how it should be stock. You can fish off the edge of the dock. You can watch parades with that. You know, day drinking with your buds. Now here's a really good example of how the universal tab positioner and string line tool are intended to be used. All these tabs were positioned with the string and the string made sure that all the tabs were in line and on the same plane and the tab holder there held everything in place while you tack weld it and then once you're done tack welding you remove the magnet and do all the finish welding.
that's it. Project's done. So, how much did I make? What did we charge? Let's get into it right now. So we got a few bills to cover. Number one is we bought a lot of material. That material wasn't cheap. We spent about $300 on materials. We consumed some of our templates in the process, a little over 20 feet of templates. That's a dollar per foot. Then we also had a few miscellaneous bills that we're gonna throw in there, such as the TIG welding wire, the gas for the machine. And then finally, and this is the most important one, is wages. You will always wanna have enough money in the project to cover your wages and then have some left over to cover your shop expenses. So the shop rate typically includes wages. And that's where the debate usually kicks off. Now this shop right here is in our backyard, so we don't have the same costs that other people would have if you rented a place. So we think a fair price for our shop is $60 an hour. I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts on that. Some prices, like a typical mechanic shop, say for a Ford dealership, is in the hundred plus dollars per hour and it doesn't have the same skill set as the skill sets we have. So I'm not exactly sure if that's a good gauge of how much you should charge per hour. But you guys let me know. The total amount of time we spent on it was about 40 hours. We were filming at the same time and we have our products that we sell and we had to stop and fill orders. So there was a little bit of, um, is it exactly 40 hours? No, probably not. The total bill that I proposed for Rue was $3,000. <clears> he didn't want to spend three grand on it, so I worked with him. I said, okay, we can come down a little bit, and we agreed on 2,500 bucks. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a little bit of math right now, and on screen I'm gonna show you how much of that was left over after you cover all the bills. And that's it. We've made it all this way. And if you guys want a full how business works breakdown, I'll do a whole episode on how you handle things like taxes and advertising costs and how you divide that out by the work that you're doing. So you guys let me know if you want more details on how business works and how to make fabrication a business, or in this case, I did it as an example of a side hustle. You guys let me know in the comments section. I'd love to hear your thoughts and I'll see you on the next one.